The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but his disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the, disciples whom, so the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards dragging the net with fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter asked him, Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week, I'll be going to uh, Reno, Nevada, to a conference. And at this conference, uh, I've been really honored to be asked to give the keynote address on the, the opening night of the conference. And in preparing for that, I decided that I must, for the first time, um, reveal a, a secret about myself. Something I did three years ago. 
that I'm not too proud of. And then it occurred to me, why would I share this in a room full of hundreds of strangers when I haven't even told Bishop Bryan or Father Mike or you guys, the people I <coughs> know and love the best? So I want to share it with you. Um, when, this is Can you help me? Um, please, when I tell you this, um, uh, understand that at the time I was kind of desperate. Not that that's an excuse for what I did, but um, it might help you understand it. Three years ago, I went to Beverly Hills, actually, it was in, and to see a woman, rather beautiful, striking woman, as I recall, and I gave her $250, and then, um, She picked up a hypodermic needle and syringe and injected me six times with Botox. <laughs> I think, why would a priest get Botox? Especially paying that much money for something that obviously didn't work, right? <laughs> 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 no, of course it didn't work. Now, or you think I got that for cosmetic reasons? No. <clears throat> That's not the case at all. Believe it or not, I went to this dermatologist. It's a dermatologist, and she gave me six injections of Botox, all in my lips. And the idea was, you know, Botox, what Botox is? Botox works on wrinkles, which is what most people use it for. It works because it paralyzes muscles, right? It just freezes the muscles so it can't move, so that's how wrinkles stay on. Well, this doctor had a technique where she would put Botox and paralyze muscles in your lips so that you couldn't close your mouth around a cigarette. It was a quit smoking tool, right? And I'm embarrassed about it, not because I did it, because I wasted all that money on something that only worked for about five, six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now as I'm telling you that story, think of where your mind was going. <laughs> you weren't thinking about me quitting smoking, right? No. The whole point of that story is that so in exactly two hours and three minutes, it'll be 501 days since I've had a second. Right? That's the real point of all this. That's how desperate I was to spend that kind of money on Botox for something that didn't work. Uh, now, in the gospel today, it would be easy to get sidetracked by the message and miss what was really going on. Because it is kind of an unusual gospel in the sense that there are some mixed metaphors there. And there's something very interesting there. Scripture did something it rarely did. It mentioned that they caught 153 fish. 153 fish. Now, they're usually not so specific when they talk about stuff like that. Why? Mm -hmm. What does 153 fish mean? Now, people have written books on this, just on this number. What St. Cyril speculated that, well, there uh, must have meant there were 153 different species of fish in the sea, and that meant they're supposed to catch all of the world, all <laughs> types and manner of people, all 153. Uh, Another saint speculated that, well, uh, there are ten commandments, 
and, and seven is the mystical number in the Hebrew religion, so 10 plus seven is 17. You know what happens when you add one plus two plus three plus four plus five? When you get to 17? 153. So that must have meant, as another saint put it, well, 100 must mean all the Gentiles. 50 stands for the remnant of Israel, and what's left? 3, 3 is the Trinity. That's how it ends up. <laughs> really? <laughs> Could it possibly be that 153 is simply the number of fish that were in the net? Mm -hmm. That's all. Really, if we defocus on uh, my story of uh, getting Botox, if the, if the Botox becomes the main part of the story, you missed the point. The point is, I tried real hard to quit smoking, and finally succeeded. The point of this story is not the number of fish, right, in the uh, nets. It's simply the fact that they caught this huge number of fish after fishing all night and not catching anything. That's the point of the story. The miracle in today's gospel actually can boil down to something very simple. And we don't have to complicate it by trying to figure out this and figure out that. The simple thing is, number one, they did not recognize Jesus. Right? By appearance. They just saw him, but they didn't realize who he was. How they recognized him is by what he did. Right? Not what he looked like, <coughs> but what he did. And the message, obvious message for that, for us, is what we do is far more important than what we look like or what we even say. Right? <coughs> he had, he made fish for breakfast. Who has fish for breakfast? But I guess it was fashionable at the time. <laughs> There are people that write books about this proves or doesn't prove that Jesus was a vegetarian. <laughs> like that's real important, right? Again, the simple focus is not that he cooked fish for breakfast. The simple point is that he cooked. The risen Lord cooked breakfast for his disciples. In other words, he took seriously his own mandate to them to be of service, to act. Not just to say words, not just to preach, but to act. And once again, as he did in the washing of the feet, <coughs> he showed service to others by cooking breakfast for them. <coughs> Those are the simple messages of the gospel. If you want to analyze something, you can figure out, well, why did Jesus ask Simon Peter three times, do you love me? Well, the gospel goes out of its way to mention charcoal. He cooked the fish with charcoal. Uh, <clears throat> what's the only other reference in the Bible to charcoal? Isaiah. Hmm? Isaiah? 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 <laughs> I hate it when you know so much. <laughs> it is birthday this week. <clears throat> now, the other reference in the New Testament to charcoal is when Peter was standing by the fire after Jesus was arrested, trying to warm himself up, and he denied knowing Jesus how many times? Three. 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 So that three times, the three times that Jesus asked to love was Jesus' is kind of polite way of reminding him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. without you know, thrashing him and, and making him apologize or anything, just a subtle way of reminding him that <clears throat> three times he had the chance to say he loved me, but three times he didn't do that. So I'm asking you three times if you love him. So when we're tempted to overanalyze, when we're tempted to make things more complex than they need to be, when we want to add lurid details to stories to embellish them, that, I mean, it's fine for jokes, it's, it's, it's fine for conversation around a bottle of wine, but when it comes to the scripture, really, it's sometimes uh, 153 fish is just 153 fish. So let's take seriously the call that Jesus said to follow him by action by feeding his 
lambs, by taking care of others, by uh, acting out his mandate to love one another. Now please stand.